There is a new online technology that might have the capacity to change every aspect of society. It's called blockchain, and it's a global network of computers that's extremely secure because it allows digital information to be distributed, but not copied. Blockchain is still in its infancy, kind of like email in the 1990s, but it's the foundation of the growing digital currency, Bitcoin. And blockchain proponents say one day the technology could be used to pay people, to track food shipments, even sell music. Here's NewsHour Weekend's Hari Srinivasan. I'm walking on Wall Street with author Don Tapscott. He's written a dozen books on technology and sees one that could change everything around us. He's not the only believer. While the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up about 20% in the past year, Bitcoin, a digital currency traded in online exchanges, is up more than 700% to a total value of more than $76 billion. That's more than American Express. The surge has people wondering whether Bitcoin is in a bubble. For Tapscott, that question is missing the real story. The real pony here is the underlying technology called the blockchain. Tapscott and his son co-wrote a book called Blockchain Revolution, named after the technology that supports Bitcoin and other so-called cryptocurrencies. They're called that because of the cryptography or computer code that makes them secure. Tapscott says the technology is the key to creating trust in peer-to-peer -peer transactions, like sending or receiving money without a bank or a credit card company in between. And trust is achieved not by a big intermediary, it's achieved by cryptography, by collaboration, and by some clever code. Here's how the blockchain works. When you send or receive an asset, the transaction is recorded in a global public ledger. A network of millions of computers store copies of that ledger and work to validate new transactions in blocks. When each block is verified, it's sealed and connected to the preceding block, which in turn is connected to every block that has ever been validated, creating a secure blockchain. There's now an immutable record of that transaction. And if I wanted to go and hack that transaction, say to use that money to pay somebody else, I'd have to hack that block plus the previous block and the entire history of commerce on that blockchain, not just on one computer, but across millions of computers simultaneously, all using the highest level of cryptography, while the most powerful computing resource in the world is watching me. The way I like to think of it is that a, a blockchain is a highly processed thing, sort of like a chicken McNugget. And if you wanted to hack it, it'd be like turning a chicken McNugget back into a chicken. Now, someday someone will be able to do that, but for now, it's going to be tough. Tapscott predicts these global ledgers or blockchains could affect several parts of the economy during the next decade, in particular, the financial industry. In a blockchain future, what happens to the New York Stock Exchange? Well, a likely scenario is it becomes a fabulous museum, and it is a beautiful building when you think about <laughs> it. But Buying and selling a stock can be done peer-to-peer -peer now using new blockchain platforms. He says routine transactions like using a credit card or making online payments with PayPal or Venmo could be replaced with instant peer-to-peer -peer blockchain transactions, speeding up how long it takes and shrinking the costs. Think about something like you tap your card in a Starbucks and a bunch of messages go through different companies, some of them using it you know, 30-year-old technology, and three days later, a settlement occurs. Well, if all of that were on a blockchain, there would be no three-day delay. The payment and the settlement is the same activity, so it would happen instantly and in a secure way. So that's either going to disintermediate those players, or if those players are smart, they'll embrace this technology to speed up the whole metabolism of the financial industry. Beyond upending financial transactions, Tapscott imagines a future where a blockchain could be used to transfer any kind of asset, from a user's personal data to intellectual property. Some of that has already begun. This is Consensus, a technology startup in Brooklyn, New York. Joseph Lubin founded Consensus and helped develop the Ethereum blockchain, the second biggest blockchain in the world after Bitcoin. Ethereum launched in 2015. Ethereum is by far the most powerful uh, blockchain platform out there. It has uh, the most expressive programming language. Meaning Ethereum can do something pretty radical. It allows for what are known as smart contracts to be built into the code. So it can also transfer a set of instructions or conditions. 
kind of like what it sounds like. It's a contract that self-executes and has a payment system built into it, sort of like a contract that has built-in lawyers and governments and a bank account. At Consensus, one project applies this idea to music. Click buy album. Jesse Grushak is the founder of Ujo, a music platform for artists to distribute their music through the blockchain. Artists decide what price to sell their music and pocket more from their intellectual property. We're looking at trying to make the music industry more efficient, but at the end of the day, our top level goal is to get artists paid more for their work and for all their creative content. But Ujo is not yet easy to use. There's only one album on the platform, and it requires users to buy music with Ether, the cryptocurrency used on the Ethereum blockchain. So the blockchain is still kind of in its infancy right now. It's still in kind of the, the Netscape phase, really, of the internet, where you, know, you don't have that AOL, you don't have that landing page that just opens the world up to you. It's still a little nerdy, it's still a little technical, but we're working really hard to kind of make that usable, make the user experience seamless, because um, really this technology, we want it to be in the hands of everyone. When he said a little nerdy, he wasn't kidding. In order to get an idea, I went out and bought some cryptocurrencies online, and the process was not easy. Certainly not as easy as going to the bank to get cash or calling a stockbroker to buy a stock. But then, using my first email account in the early 90s, that wasn't easy either. I think we're in 1994. And in 94, we had the internet, and most people were using it for a single application, email. And that's kind of like Bitcoin is today. The application is called a currency. But we're starting to see the rise of the web, as we did in 94. A general purpose platform for building applications that changed many, many industries. You've literally written a book on the blockchain. And how do you know that this is actually working, that people are believing in this, investing in this, understanding the potential in this? In every single industry now, companies are starting to implement pilots to explore how this technology can change their operations. Tapscott points to retailer Walmart, which has done a pilot using a blockchain to track food safety, and manufacturer Foxconn, which is experimenting with using a blockchain to track its supply chain. Still, this blockchain believer acknowledges the technology has a lot left to prove. There's, a, there's a, several critics out there that kind of look at this and say, this is like tulip mania, yeah, yeah. this cryptocurrency stuff, this is a bubble uh, yeah. bigger than I've ever seen before. There's a bunch of people that don't know a thing about what's going on that just want to see something go up. Well, for sure, there's a hype cycle that we're into now. But the biggest impact will be that blockchain itself is going to change the fundamental operations of banks, of retail companies, of supply chains, of manufacturing companies, of governments, and of every institution in society.